Why didn't you contact probation as soon as you got out? Why did probation have to hunt you down again? Your Honor, I'm sorry. I was under the impression that it had been taken care of. By who? But before I was released, even from the rehabilitation. Uh, wait, how was you contacting probation handled? I'm sorry. I had sent several emails to my attorney and I didn't realize that I needed. Your attorney isn't you. Miss Elder doesn't want to hear from your attorney. Miss Elder wanted to hear from you. It's not his responsibility to call probation. It's your responsibility. This You're not new at this. You've been on probation for two years now. Yes, Your Honor. And I made myself very clear. You committed another, or you're, it's alleged that you committed another felony while you were on probation here. And I gave you an opportunity to go seek help, but I made it clear that you can go to this out-of-state program, but you must return. I did not say you could leave the state and go do whatever. We have no idea what you're doing now. Yes, you say you're an outpatient. I don't know what that means. We haven't received any probation hasn't received any information about any outpatient treatment programming, what that entails, nothing. And Miss Elder is spending all her time contacting you. That's not her job. Yes, Your Honor. I can have all of that paperwork and all of uh, the counselors and therapists and centers send her all you of that. You need to return to Michigan, take care of the felony. Yes, Your Honor. You need to stay in contact with Ms. Elder, not your attorney, not your boyfriend, not your mom, you. You call her and yes. you talk to her. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. Come down. Tell me that you call. Uh, I believe it's commissioners. All right. All right. The court is calling 2020 CR 4378 and 2020 CR 4377 state of Texas versus Roberto Espinoza. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michael Villarreal for the state. For the defense? Alex Scharf for Mr. Espinosa, ready. All right. And are you Mr. Espinosa? Yes. Okay. All right, Mr. Espinosa, in each of the cause numbers, you entered a plea on May 24th, and you entered a plea of guilty. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court deferred finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. And each of the cost numbers, your punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 12 years. There's a $1,500 fine. State opposes your application. Uh, the cases will run concurrent. Uh, there's to be Chapter 62 compliance. And there's to be no contact uh, with the complainant or the complainant's family. And you entered a plea to the offense of indecency with the child contact. Uh, have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Judge. Any objections to the PSI report state? No, Your Honor. Defense? No. All right. Uh, state, you're opposed. Do you have any witnesses? State has no witnesses. All right. Defense, do you have any witnesses? Yes, Judge. I'd like to call Dahlia Morales. All right. And if you'll step to the uh, my left, please. All right, can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. All right, I'm going to need you to speak up so the court reporter can hear you, okay? okay. All right, could you state your name for the record, please? Okay, okay we can't Louder. hear you. We got the fans going, so it's even harder. Yeah, and Louder. Louder. All right, defense. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, what, um, what's your relationship to uh, Robert Espinosa? And the ex-wife. All right. All right, just one moment. I'm sorry. On the back row, uh, Albert. if you all could uh, keep it down a little bit. Thank you. Yes. Um, describe to the judge your relationship with Mr. Espinosa. Uh, well, we were 
married for together for about maybe 21 years, married 19, and divorced uh, 2007, I believe. Um, we have a very active life. Our children in sports and nonstop year round. Uh, very supportive and uh, always there for our children. All right. Now, you know, <clears throat> understand that Mr. Espinosa has admitted and pled guilty to the two charges that the judge described. Mm -hmm. um, um, what can you tell the judge about that? Very much out of his character. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a woman of faith. I believe in forgiving and pray that there's a second chance providing he seeks out. And how many children did you and uh, Robert have? Three girls. What are their names? Genevieve Espinosa and Bianca Bonda. Yeah. And how old are they now? Uh, 37 and 43. Thank you, ma'am. That's what it is. Um, I, I have some questions for you. Sorry. Um, are you related to two, either of the two victims in this case? No. No? Um, and so are you aware of the specific allegations in this case? Am I aware? Yes. Okay. Um, to include that he has sexually assaulted at least two girls. You're aware of that? Yes. Okay. And so you're asking for a second chance for him. Okay. I think everybody deserves a second chance. Okay. So there's nothing that he could have done that would have prevented him from needing a second chance. Anything that he could have done? That he killed somebody? Should he get a second chance? Like All right, that'll be sustained. The objection is sustained. You can ask your next question. I'm not All right, any Nothing further, Judge. All right, thank you for coming in to testify. Thank you. You can be excused if you need to get to work. Okay, thank you. Um, call uh, Genevieve Espinosa. All right, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand for me, please. And could you make sure you keep your voice up so that the court reporter can hear? All right, if you could state your name for the record. <clears throat> Genevieve Marie Espinosa. All right, defense. Thank you, um, how are How do you know Robert Espinosa? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, your mom just testified. Is that right? Yes. What do you want to tell the judge about your father? Um, I'd like to say that my dad, as long as I've been alive, oof, sorry, has been a man of service mm -hmm. and always helping us, everybody in the community throughout our lives. And I just believe that he is a good person in that I am very, I'm, I'm by his side, I'm by impartial, I'm by everybody's side, but I just really believe that he's, he is a good person. Um, do you want the judge to send him to prison or to give him treatment on some sort of supervision, court supervision? I agree with that. Treatment is absolutely necessary, and that um, rehabilitation is really important, and that he can still be a service to his community, to us, his family, and and especially his parents. Okay, what what's what's uh, going on with his parents? Um, they're getting older, and um, a little hard. You know, it's a little harder to be on. Um, uh, make visits, also appointments, uh, just with age in general, they're, okay. they're needing a lot of help. All right. Um, is your grandmother 
she have uh, dementia mm -hmm. right? yes. and her husband her step not his father mm -hmm. but her husband um do you know if robert takes care of both of them mm -hmm. breakfast lunch and dinner every day making sure they take the meds always always there for them making sure that they're adhering to their schedules and also his own too so okay now you know that he has admitted to some pretty from pretty serious crimes. What do you want to tell the judge about that and what she should do to punish your husband, your dad? Well, I have not my entire life had any uh, any dad experiences or anything of that nature. So obviously all of this was a shock, a complete surprise. Oh, and deciding his is his punishment. Yes, Wendy. Say, I have a couple questions for you. You said that he's a good person. Yes. So, you think good people sexually assault two girls over a period of ten years? I think that good people can get into situations, and I think that that can be rehabilitated and counseled. And there are things we can do, and not just give up on somebody. And you said that he's a man of service. Well, you can agree with me the things that he did to these two underage girls were not acts of service, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you're asking him, you're asking this court to give him probation because essentially what I have down, I understood from your testimony is that he's a good person and he helped the community. Okay. But you can agree with you at least ruin the lives of two people. Yeah. Again, I can't speak on behalf of anybody else, but we're just asking from our perspective. This is my father, and I want to do everything I can. I get that. I wouldn't want my dad to go to prison, but there's a difference between wanting and deserve. You can agree? I agree. I'll, I'll pass the list. Um, briefly, you had said he that your dad had helped the community. Could you tell the judge about that? Um, he, while we were in school through pretty much all of high school and while we were kids, um, he always volunteered to um, clean up the parks and clean up the school paint, and we were always there by his side um, helping along with that. Um, so we, we have always been kind of driven towards um, you know, following in, in their footsteps and, and trying to make things better. So I think, I, I'm sorry, that's the question. <laughs> I was just asking how he would help the community. Oh, that's definitely in those ways. Thank you, ma'am. No further questions. All right. Any further follow-up questions? No. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Defense. Um, Any other witnesses? That's it. All right. Uh, is there anything you wish to say? Just saying that uh, um, I apologize. All right. Let me put you under oath. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand if you could state your name for the record. Okay. And what did you wish to say? Uh, I just want to say I apologize to the victims. Hope that they get uh, Help. And if I also need help. So I'm sorry what I did. So, I live with this. All right. Uh, defense. Thank you, Honor. Mr. Espinosa, do you hate yourself for what you did? Yes. All right. Were you ever in the military? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, what branch? Uh, Marine Corps. For how long? Six years. In the Army National Guard for two years. Right. And after you finished your service to federal government, did you uh, work for the city of San Antonio? Yes, for 22 years. Okay. 
And what kind of work did you do for the city? Uh, automotive. Automotive work. Okay. What is, explain to the judge what that means. Um, we would maintain uh, city vehicles to be running 24 hours a day. Okay. When did you retire? Uh, here in 2000. All right. How old are you? 65. Do you have any health issues? Yes, I have uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol. Okay. Are you taking medication? Yes. All right. Now, what kind of diabetes? Type 1 or type 2? Um, type 2. Okay. Uh, has that progressed? To, has it gotten better or has it gotten worse? I mean, How? Uh, medication I was taking wasn't uh, really doing this job, so uh, I have to go back and have uh, them reevaluate me for, for better uh, medication. Okay. What um, what is your sugar level? Uh, it's about three hundred. Is that normal? No. What's sugar normal? Level, sugar level should be under ninety and hundred. Um, your high blood pressure. Uh, are you taking any medication for that? Yes. What kind of medication? It's um, lower my high blood pressure and the cholesterol pills that I take also. Now. Do you also take care of your mom and her husband? Yes. How old is your mom? She's 82. All right. And um, why does she need to be taken care of? Uh, she's got dementia. Okay. And um, who's the primary caretaker of her? Uh, her husband, which my stepdad, but I usually do most of the, the, the scheduling for uh, doctor visits and all that. Okay. Um, well, and your stepdad, does he have some disabilities? Yes, he, uh, his um, left leg is pretty much gone. He, can't, he has to use a cane or a walker to get around. So it's hard for him to get up from, from, with any problem. So if you were taken out of the equation, who's going to help your mom and her husband? Um, all right. Now, prior to entering your plea in this case, how much uh, time in jail did you did you uh, spend? Nine months. All right. When you finally got out of jail after the nine months, uh, did you have to wear a GPS monitor? Yes. Sir. All right. I've been in uh, August. I mean November. 2020 to this date. Okay. Uh, you had any violations? No, 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 Now, let's go back a little bit. Um, who raised you as a child? Uh, my grandmother. Why? Um, my mom was in the picture at that time. Okay. She was, uh, uh, I guess, getting remarried and all that stuff. So uh, I didn't have that much. Pretty, uh, pretty much raised myself with, with my grandmother. Where's your dad, your real dad? Um, supposedly he's in California. I have not spoken to him since the age of uh, 12, I think, 11. You understand that the only thing, the only choices that the judge has are to just send you to prison or she sees fit, she could grant you deferred adjudication. You'd have to register as a sex offender. She could give you up to six months in jail as a condition. She could keep you on the monitor for the duration of your deferred adjudication. Um, tell the judge what you would like for her to sentence you to. What should your sentence be? Um, I would like to see if I could have deferred education because I do need help. Help with what? Uh, getting uh, uh, with the problem I have with, with uh, what I have done. The crimes that you admitted that you yes that you committed, and how old are you? Sixty-five. <clears throat> So 
Is there anything else that you want to tell the judge that I haven't asked you? I just hope the uh, victims get help. Um, and that I also need help. So I'll leave it up to the judge to see what she wants to do. Passwords. Stay. I just have a couple of questions for you. What specific help do you need? Just getting back to what a normal human being should be. So <clears throat> you fled to an offense that happened in 2009, correct? Yes. Okay. And then in 2013, you were arrested for a different sex offense, right? Yes. Why didn't you seek help then? I didn't have uh, the means for that. But instead, you went on and in 2019, you perpetrated against another child, correct? So, despite being arrested for a sex offense, you at that point didn't decide to address your behavior. No. So now that you are facing prison time, is now when you're thinking that it's the appropriate time to get some help? Um, you know, I think I have what that I want to is to get help. Okay, but you could have done that in 2013, right? Yes. But instead, now that we are facing prison time, now you're asking this court to give you probation so that you can get some help. I'll pass All right. Any further question? No further question. All right. I just have one question uh, for you. What was your thought process when you were committing these acts? Because I read and and you know I always make sure I read everything because I want to make sure I'm familiar with everything. So I read all the stipulations, and then when people come before me and I'm to do a sentencing, I read all the stipulations, and I also read the uh, PSI report that's been prepared for me. So there is one incident <clears throat> where you go to a store and you ask her brother to get out of the vehicle so that he can go get gum. And then you proceed to um, insert your while he's in the store. And so what I'm looking at is you had to know it's a public place. Who knows how long her brother is going to be in the store to buy gum and you're having his sister to remain in the vehicle. What was your thought process? I, I have no, um, I have no, I didn't have no thought on what I was doing. I, I know. It was I mean, you have to be thinking something. I mean, I know you're coming to me and you're saying it was wrong, mm -hmm. but she had to take off her pants. Because according to that, according to what I've read, mm -hmm. you told her to remove her pants. So at that point in time, there had to be some thought process, like how much time do you, you had to be estimating, I'm thinking, how long her brother's going to be in the store. Is there a long line? How many cars are in the parking lot? Because that determines to me how long he's going to be on line. First, he has to pick out the gum. When he picks out the gum, he stands in line. How long is going to take the cashier with him? How long is it going to take him to pay? I mean, wasn't all of that running through your thoughts so you wouldn't get caught? Yeah, it was in a public place, so there was uh, uh, people out there, you know. So I, it was just I, I, I didn't know my my where I was at at the time. So I, okay, it was just okay. For me to explain. Anything else from either side? Brief argument. All right. The court will hear argument. Uh, defense. Thank you, Judge. Well, I'm sorry. Actually, it's the state first. And in state, if you want to reserve, you can. I'll argue first, Judge. Uh, I, I think this case is clear. 12 years is not enough. Um, but I understand that is the plea bargain that the state entered into with this defendant to have these cases resolved, prevent two girls from having to take the stand and tell about the things that this man did to their body. We have three witnesses, um, including the defendant, come here and tell this court that he should be granted deferred adjudication. He should be given probation because he needs help. 
Um, number one, I think that's quite frankly a ridiculous argument when he was facing a continuous sex abuse of a child case. He could have received help then. He could have sought it out then, regardless of what the allegations were, the truthfulness of those allegations. But instead, we have him, that case gets dismissed. And then in 2019, he perpetrates another in a, against another young woman, uh, a girl, a girl within our community. Um, these girls are going to be dealing with this, <clears throat> excuse me, for more than 12 years of their life. They'll be dealing with this for the rest of their lives because of this man's actions, because of his inability to stop himself from his inability to seek the help to prevent him from perpetrating on children. He got the benefit of a bargain and we're asking that he get the full 12 years because we're talking about two girls over a period of 10 years. And the allegations in and of themselves are, I think show the, the terrible nature which they were committed, especially when you talk about them, like the court pointed out, happening in public, happening in a park when he gives this young girl uh, alcohol um, and then perpetrates against her and then takes inappropriate photographs of her and then asks those inappropriate photographs to be sent to him. Um, nothing's going to stop him. And so at least for 12 years, this community can be safe from him perpetrating on another young girl and from him perpetrating and ruining another girl's life and every single life that touches that girl's life. So we're asking that you deny his application and you send him for the full 12 years because he deserves every bit and every day of that 12 years. All right, defense. Thank you, um, I certainly understand the prosecution's position. Um, these kinds of crimes can't justify them can't give excuses and he's not. Um, he did what he did because there's something wrong with him. And it is something wrong deep part of his brain. And I have seen treatment providers, sex offender treatment providers perform and get people to I'm not gonna say 100% normal, but they have taught them how to not do that anymore, to get their minds off that. And they are subject to, you know, you could give him 10 years deferred, all right? He's 65, he's going undergoing serious medical conditions, he's taking care of his elderly mom and stepdad. Um, he served our country, he served our city. Um, what he did is inexcusable, but he, he, you know, it's not like we have sex offender treatment rehabs, advertising and putting billboards all over the city or all over the TV. You only really know about it until you really get in the system. And so we've, we've talked about that. And he wants to find out what is my what what is my problem? Why am I like this? He hates himself for what he did. He served nine months in jail during COVID and has been under house arrest since then, Judge. I think you can, you know, temper punishment with rehabilitation in this case. You can give him six months as a condition. <laughs> Six months in jail is a condition. That would come up to over a year with the nine months he did um, awaiting, awaiting trial. Um, the sex offender treatment program in Bear County is outstanding. The counselors are outstanding. Um, he knows he's gonna have to register as a sex offender. We talked about the standard conditions of yearly polygraphs and treatment and counseling. And he, he, he wants it and he needs it. If you just send him to prison, judge, I don't know how long he's going to make it in there for his health problems, um, but he's not going to get through. They just don't give treatment in prison. 
And so we're asking the court for 10 years to part adjudication. All right. Um, Mr. Espinosa, I want to let you know that I listen uh, to the witnesses that were called on your behalf. I think it's um, always commendable when we have people who are willing to come in to um, give me another insight into you other than what you've been charged with. And I wanted you to know that um, I appreciate your service that you've given to uh, the community um, as your time as a Marine and also uh, the work that your daughter said that you did in the community to uh, help. Um, and each of the cause numbers, the court is going to find you guilty. The court will sentence you to 12 years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, $1,500 fine, time and money to run concurrent. Each of the cause numbers were run concurrently. So 2020 CR 4378 and 2020 CR 4377 are running concurrent. There's to be chapter 262 compliance in each of the cause numbers. And in each of the cause numbers, there's to be no contact with the complainants or the complainant's family. And I believe uh, both parties are aware of uh, those persons. And I've included those names um, on the docketing sheet. So those names will be on the judgments. And those are the names that are in um, the indictments. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing from either side? Judge, we just have victim impact. Okay. Um, I don't know if the Zoom is working. No one has zoomed in. All right. She said that she no, sh no one's in the link. Just give me one moment. In each of the cause numbers, I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document uh, with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? All right. Um, good luck to you. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to have you remain because my understanding the state has victim impact, but that's going to be by video. Okay. So if you can just um, have it, have him in the back and then we'll bring you uh, out, Mr. Um, Trevino and Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Um, All right. Good morning. I'm just putting these on your radar screen. Just um, things that you got email that you while you're in Spain. Okay. So you don't have to look at them right now, but I just have to turn them out. Okay. I will. I will look at them. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and you gave me this. Would you get that? Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll look at it. Okay. Thank you. I will do that today. Okay. Thanks for coming down. Hey, uh, excuse me. She is now zooming in. Do you all want video or no video? I think she wants video. Ah, okay. And it's still not, oh, there we are. Why do people keep messing with that? Who keeps touching that? Five minutes later. All right, so we're ready. Hello? All right, just one moment. Um, and we will let you know when they are ready. Thank you. All right. There's someone here to give victim impact to you. Um, they're going to be respectful. I require everyone in the courtroom to treat everybody with respect. So uh, you can just listen to what they say and internalize it. You may begin with your uh, impact statement. Thank you. Um, so. <laughs> um, so forever. I was embarrassed and scared to tell anybody what happened to me. Um, 
I was ashamed for something that I shouldn't, it wasn't even my fault. It was 100% his. Um, I tried to make up silly excuses growing up in my head for why he did what he did to me. And um, I figured if I acted like nothing was happening and if I pretended like nothing was happening, then maybe one day it'll stop happening. And it didn't. Um, because of him, I'm 23 years old and I still get nightmares. I wake up crying, screaming, sweating. Um, because of him, I do have diagnosed PTSD. Um, I was, I had a hard time trusting other men growing up. When I met my husband, I had a hard time knowing that someone else wasn't going to hurt me. <sighs> um, in my nightmares, I had dreams of him showing up at my doorstep. And now that he's going to prison, I feel some sort of relief that I'm not going to wake up one morning and see him at my door. Um, I was scared all men were like him because of everything he did to me all those years. And now because of him, I, if I, I had to live with the guilt that if I spoke up sooner, he wouldn't have gone and done this to other people. But I didn't. So that's something I have to deal with for my life. And um, because of the fact that he couldn't be a man, a decent person, or even a human, we're all here in this position. Him finally having to deal with the consequences will help put some ease on me, but I still have so much to work on when it comes to myself because of him. He took my childhood. He took my teenage years and, you know, now he's done taking control of a lot of things. Um, I suffered too much because of him and I I don't wish any sort of luck for him for the next few years, but I, but I do hope he feels helpless and embarrassed. Uh, I hope he feels shame um, along with anyone who may have stood by his side during this time. And I'm happy this is the end. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you for um, coming down. Neil. Maybe excuse, Judge. Yes. Mm -hmm.